What's going on everybody? John Eric Poli here with my MMA news and today's guest just defeated Arlene Blanco at Bellator 294. Always a pleasure being joined by Sarah McMahon. Sarah, nice to see you again. Thanks for being here. Yeah, no problem. It's good to see you too. <laughs> so let's get into everything here. Before we actually get into the fight specifics or what's next or anything like that, uh, this fight for you, a bit of new territory, right? Fighting with the Bellator promotion. You were in the UFC for 12 years. Just what was that experience like of just being a part of a, a new promotion and the way they do things? And what was that whole experience like? Um, it actually was super similar to my, you know, time with the UFC. Um, Bellator is a, a really high level promotion as well. So they may not um, have a, like as many like pay-per-views or like reach as many, you know, but um, other than that, they're a very professional organization. So my fight week felt almost the same. And I know the promotion does, like every promotion does things just like maybe like a little bit different. Was there anything maybe that they did differently that you thought was pretty cool? Like I know at least one thing I like that Bellator does that might be different than the UFC is like when you guys come out to fight, you walk down that ramp and everything. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that that would be one of the one of the few things. It's the main thing is that like everybody is doing what they can to take care of fighters and we most of the times the fighters have very, you know, similar needs. So, um also uh they have Burt Watson who kind of like runs a lot of the stuff to take care of the fighters and he was with the UFC for so long, so he doesn't need to like reinvent the wheel. He just takes care of the fighter's needs. So in, in that respect, it was just very similar. Um, the the differences, I think, was like fighting in Hawaii. Like fighting in Hawaii is always a little bit different than fighting anywhere else. It's just like a um, the humidity that, you know, like fighting kind of like at the sea level and like that had a different feel. And then fighting for like a Hawaii crowd is also it has a different feel. But if if any other promotion were there, it would it would be the same as that. Yeah, but I want to ask you about the two fighting in Hawaii. What was that whole experience like? I mean, obviously the state's absolutely beautiful. I'm sure it had to be uh, definitely one thing you're glad you got to check off the bucket list, right? Yeah, no, I love Hawaii. Um, I'd actually fought there for Pro Elite um, before the UFC um, two times. So uh, it was really nice returning there. And then also like Hawaii has like a real, they have a real relaxed kind of feel, but they're also like really like kind of proud like warrior spirit there so like fighting in that crowd like they're they definitely really like the fighting scene so it kind of amps you up a little bit more too gotcha so let's talk now a little bit about this fight here uh, a little bit so first off uh this fight uh, 145 pounds bit of new territory for you because uh your ufc career mostly at bantamweight there what was that experience like of fighting at 145 how to feel on the body and everything like that uh, it felt, it felt really good. Um, it felt great not cutting weight. I didn't realize how much, uh, cutting weight cut into my performance. Uh, so this was like a really pleasant surprise. Um, and I realized after I accepted, you know, fighting at 145, um, my wrestling career, it was 63 kilos, which is like, uh, you know, almost 139. And, most of the year we fight, we wrestle at a two kilo allowance. So 143.3 is where I wrestled for a very, very long time. So I didn't realize I was actually kind of returning to that weight rather than moving up for the first time. But it was, it was the first, well, I never really fought there very much. So. And when you change weight classes too, right? It's funny because like you were saying, right? Uh, you didn't realize the impact it had on the body. That's obviously the biggest one the fighters realize whenever they move up a weight class is that impact on the body. So I guess two part question is number one, how great was that? Number one, but number two, I know a lot of times fighters will say when they move up a weight class, like the not cutting weight part is fun, but sometimes a lot of fighters will say, I saw, you know, these people are a little bit bigger. I'm going to have to pack on some muscle. They still try to do, uh, you know, make some changes with the body and everything. Do you have anything like that in store or are you just okay with just not cutting as much weight? Um, no, I, I don't see any, if you're going to move up a weight class, why would you gain weight in order to cut again? Like, you know, well, so also like, I think it's just for me, I've always been really strong for 135 because of wrestling just makes you very strong. So 
when it came to the girls at 145, like I don't have a problem manage moving them, but I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel good and I don't move good if I'm heavier than like 147. So why would I go to, you know, a weight that I don't move as well, that I feel kind of sluggish and I feel more heavy and rooted. It's hindering my performance. So I'm just going to go where I feel the best. Well, I can tell you what, uh, definitely had a great performance at Bellator 294. Let's talk about that now. Uh, how happy were you with the performance? Obviously, unanimous decision win. One judge gave you a 10-8 round in the mix. Sure, you got to be happy with the performance. Uh, yeah, I was. I um, I didn't expect a 10-8 round. Um, I, so for me in the fight, um, and what I know on the outside, it probably looked like a lot more lopsided, but feeling how I felt in the fight, I had to fight, you know, for every single thing very hard. And I was successful, but man, like every millimeter she made me work for. So for me, it was like, it was a grueling fight. Um, but it was nice that to be able, it was grueling, but I kept being able to execute like, you know, the game plan that I wanted. And she's, uh, you know, one hell of a competitor, too. Obviously, she fought for the title in Bellator. And what a tough fight right out of, out of the gate for you in a new promotion like that. Uh, do you feel that this was a statement win for you, that you came over from a different promotion, you get a former title challenger first time out, go out and, and get the big win the way that you did? Yeah, she's actually fought twice for the title. Okay. And she fought for titles for other organizations. And so, um, yeah, I, I really think that this puts me right in there for the for the next spot for the title. So we'll see. Um, it's obviously up to Bellator. Um, I know that they have been, there's other fighters who have been fighting with them longer and who've been working towards their title contender shot. And um, I believe Kat Zingano, like the, they said that the last fight she had was for a title contender. So um, I don't, if, if that they've already kind of decided that before my fight, but we'll see what happens, you know, like I'm just getting myself ready to fight whoever. And I don't know if you saw this or not. I know you went to your post-fight press conference and you called uh, pretty much essentially saying that you would love to fight for the title next, kind of like how you did here. But afterwards, Chris Seidborg, not sure if you saw it, she went to Twitter and said, I'm pretty sure that Sarah McMahon just jumped Kat Zingano in the rankings. I know the rankings came out, they had you one spot below her. But do you think that, you know, sometimes every once in a while, whenever the champion makes a statement like that, the promotions will go that way. And do you make anything of uh, Chris Seidborg's statement there that maybe that will persuade them to give you the title shot? Well, not just yet, because she still hasn't resigned with them. So, which I appreciate the nod. Um, and I feel like I did have a great performance. Like it definitely speaks for it. Uh, but until she's resigned with them, you know, like all of us are on hold unless she decides to do, you know, something with boxing or another promotion temporarily and then return later. And then you just kind of can't hold up a promotion. So it would, it would likely be Kat and I fighting for a title. So either way, I'm just, I try not to think about it as much because those decisions are so far out of my control. Um, I just am going to get back to the, get back to work and, you know, anything I did really well in the fight, I'm going to sharpen anything I need to work on. I'm going to get better at. So that's just the focus that I have. And I know after the fight, too, you made a, a comment, something along the lines of, you know, you know, time's not necessarily on your side at the point in your career. Is there any frustration at all, though, that, you know, you hope this gets moving along sooner than later? Or, or again, are you just, that's not, that's out of your control? You're just going to do what you have to do and be the best fighter you have to be? I'm not, I'm not stressing about that. Um, I've grown up a little bit in the MMA world, and I know that, uncertainty is just a part of it and that you know like very few times can you press something and something actually happen you know what you end up doing is just like whining on the internet so i don't i don't prefer that uh and so i figure if i i just control what i can control and if i go out there and i fight hard and i put on an exciting fight they will want me to be fighting in these big fights and that's that's what i can kind of control and I know Bellator for certain is definitely going to want you in a lot of big fights. I know they have uh, big plans for the rest of the year. Is there a timeline for you, at least anyway, of when you'd like to get back in there? Or again, is that all just, you know, 
play it by ear, however it plays out, it plays out. Um, I mean, I could, I didn't take much damage, so I can fight probably in like three months. I can take a little bit time to just let my body, you know, like decompress after hard camp and then get back into a fight camp. Um, I, I don't know how far out they have people scheduled for shows. I don't know, you know, like what their timeline is with cyborg of resigning. So it's like, uh, for me, it's always for my entire career. It's like afterwards, I'm kind of in no man's land until I get a call. Gotcha. And a lot of things have to play out there. Uh, so we'll just all, you know, keep those in check, see however they, uh, they fall. We'll be following it along there. Uh, let's end today though, by chatting about something that we typically always usually chat about, uh, our good old alma mater, Lock Haven University. I ain't get a chance to send Carl Poff a text message, uh, before we came on into this interview. I, I hope he's doing well. I don't know. Have you talked to him at all recently? Um, he reaches, he reached out to me before my fight and just, you know, wishing me luck and stuff like that. So, uh, Typically, you know, we just kind of send messages on Facebook and, you know, hope each other, you know, have our families are doing well and things like that. Yeah, he's a, a great guy, Carl Poff. I know we've talked about that a lot in the past there. Um, I forget if we had talked about this one or not. And I want to get your take on it uh, just as a broad topic even. But I know recently uh, Lock Haven University brought in a women's wrestling team. Obviously, back when you were wrestling and you were attending school, though, that wasn't a thing. I mean, just how awesome is that for, for women now to have that option? Any girl that likes the sport now will have that option to to compete at the college level. Pretty cool thing. Yeah, I think it's I think it's wonderful. Lock Haven was a really uh, great place to do, you know, to go to college and do sports. But there's something really special about being in a like a state that really loves wrestling and uh, really cares about their wrestlers. So I, I, I think it's just a wonderful thing for women and for the the whole university. Definitely, 100%. Uh, Sarah, it's always a pleasure catching up with you. Uh, usually we do it before a fight. It's nice getting together after a fight now and chatting about a win here. So thanks again for the time as always. Last thing before you head out, uh, go ahead, plug your social media so people know where to follow you at. You have any uh, management or sponsorships, anything like that you got to plug. I know you, you run a gym as well. If you want to give a shout out there, any of that stuff, take it away. Yeah, um, you can just on Instagram, Sarah McMahon. I'm on Facebook. So it's pretty simple. Um, uh, Precision Jiu-Jitsu Academy is our main gym page. Um, I have Precision Wrestling as well. But uh, other than that, you know, that's, that's it. Just the pages. <laughs>